Welcome. Welcome to podcast with Alexei Natenkov. Today I wanted to present to you a special podcast and special guests. A contact with Lonnie Star Capital. Lonnie Star Capital founded in 2018. It was founded for two founders. Kent Perterkowski and Rob Bersley. Lonnie Star Capital has acquired more than 500 million under management in real estate multifamily, apartments, buildings, complexes. Then it provides them to their clients cash flow, passive investment for long term. And today we have pleasure to contact with one of the director of investment relations, Dasha Bertsley. Welcome. Uh, well, um, my parents started out in, in state family, um, single family residential sales. And so we, you know, my brother, I got to see that side. And then um, my brother was actually one who kind of discovered multifamily and got us all, got us all converted. <laughs> Business part in 2018 at a conference, and basically they they were both looking to start buying deals in, in Texas, and so they really aligned in a lot of ways and decided to partner up. Um, basically, the the company is just kind of from there. Um, so my parents aren't at all directly involved in in our company, so it's it's separate. Um, so it's just my brother and I that are, are working at the firm and are involved. Um, but yeah, basically they, they started with their first deal in 2018 and we have acquired 17 properties since. Um, so, or we have 17 properties in our portfolio, I'm sorry, and we've acquired 19 um, since 2018. So I see you have uh, almost uh, 3,000 units or more. Oh uh, yeah, we have a bit. Yeah, we have a little, three thousand units. Yeah, this is awesome. This is unbelievable. So, uh, so uh, then mm -hmm. audience, so they can um, Google. I can also uh, left uh, uh, you link. Or you, if you wanted to provide me some kind of special link, I left in the comments below. So the audience and from here, from Sweden, from Europe, who follow us, so in podcast in all my social media, so can can a uh, little bit check and uh, maybe become a partners with uh, your company. This is uh, all about this, so provide value for for everyone who I meet and uh, make a podcast. So uh, this is uh, actually help to another entrepreneurs also be successful and close the deals with, uh, with uh, potential customers also. And uh, you also participated in investment or you are so you are also a partner? Yeah. So um, I started out when in 2018 when uh, Rob and Kent were doing their first deal. I did personally invest uh, myself and I've been investing, I've, I've invested personally in almost every single deal. There's me two, I believe, that I, I didn't while I was in college, but I, um, I really tried to save up all my money and I, it really was almost addicting for me. Um, to just kind of put all my money in. And luckily, um, I, I got the benefit of not having the minimum, so I was able to participate in you know all the deals that I wanted to um, with whatever amount of equity that I wanted to bring. So I would feel really lucky in that regard. Um, but yeah, so I, I am personally invested in the deals as, as well as I, I work for the firm, but I was investing prior to working as well. And here for audience for understand, we're talking about uh, Lone Star Capital. It's grounded. It's uh, starting from nothing. It's uh, hard work and uh, get your vision uh, and uh, get uh, commitment and start to to do things. It's uh, so. This is uh, also uh, Dasha Bertley also can uh, tell us. Uh, so the new company, you don't buy it. Almost done. So you potential partner and start to buy this in the beginning uh, 1000 units or, or start to buy it from one like one house one apartment rehab it uh, how, how, how is starting your company so can audience understand a little bit 
So the, the real motivation behind starting Lone Star, um, my brother and I saw our parents um, in the residential um, single family sales and you know, very different from what we're doing now. And there, there really weren't building any sort of equity with the business that they had. You know, it's very transaction based and there isn't really any wealth creation that was being built. It's just all dependent on, you know, getting the next commission. And so I would say we got exposed to real estate uh, from our parents, but we also didn't necessarily want to follow in our footsteps. It wasn't, you know, it's not that glamorous um, as a lot of, you know, TV shows make it out to be of selling single family homes. Um, so, you know, my parents did do some fix and flips, but for the most part, for our entire childhood, um, our parents were just single fam doing single family sales for, you know, representing buyers and sellers. So basically, um, once Raw kind of discovered multifamily and really saw it as a way to build equity and long-term wealth, um, that's when you know he decided to start pursuing it. He found his business partner. So um, basically, we, we kind of skipped, and, and I skipped, but I, I wasn't. I didn't start the at the firm in 2018. I started closer to 2020. Um, but there, we took a lot of steps from seeing how single family just really not scalable. So luckily, we didn't have to go through all those transitions, we just kind of got to see uh, where single family, you know, just lots of lots of headache, lots of turnover, and a lot of people could be very successful that way, but it's, like I said, it's not a very scalable business, so it's hard to make it a very smooth um, sort of experience if you're doing it at scale. So it's okay. nothing is um, easy. So that it's was really so it's nothing easy. So, so uh, audience here understand. So, uh, when when if they now today, if they because of uh, the working in this kind of way, so become the more successful. And uh, yeah, and what do you promise in your company? So uh, for your customers, so you must accomplish. So uh, it's it's grounded. So it's working uh, hard work. Uh, and make you successful in the future if you're doing right to your work and uh, be around the successful uh, also entrepreneurs. Uh, it's uh, very important so audience can understand here. So because when you when you see now, you know, the audience become um, interesting in your company and they, uh, when in this kind of information can provide for them, uh, understand how they start. So they start like family, like family office, be uh, invested in in, 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 in his uh, economy in in his co um, first uh, apartments first houses and later just become successful with uh, hard work dedication and get uh, the big goals so it's uh, how it is because uh, I'll, I before I don't know it how it was you know because you see the people uh, more successful than you and uh, when you when you don't have knowledge when you don't have information um, you 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 when you are in the system and and when you have like kind of vision a goal and you understand uh, this kind of uh, bubble so uh, it must to be something else outside the bubble uh, it cannot to be life like this uh, like i have it before so it's something must to be much better life so then you start to be uh, uh, like curious and ask you question what is outside the my bubble so then i can uh, be ask uh, the successful people what they did how they did uh, become successful and then you start to uh, uh, ground it little by little uh, step by step uh, asking questions because and, and then you started to get your vision and then you wanted to achieve these uh, goals and and this is very interesting because of the uh, audience can understand so it is not coming from the wealthy families and starting everything is done so they must to work hard and start step by step doing the uh, w what they become now so it's very very interesting and uh, thank you for contact uh, me and be uh, here in this uh, podcast with me. I appreciate it. What what kind of vision you have now or your company? 
so for understand this audience so can understand uh, where where if somebody gonna invest uh, with you with Lone Star Capital uh, what vision you have in 10 years what is gonna be in 10 years here uh, your company what kind of goals you wanted to achieve so as far as kind of our our company's mission or or what our values are um, is really about giving the best service possible to our investors and so one way that I think we kind of distinguish ourselves is um, we try to cater and and meet the level of requirements and kind of expectations of institutional capital so whether that be with our monthly updates and providing full financials and you know the level of detail in our quarterly reports monthly distributions, etc., and, and also just on the day-to-day -day type of service that we want to give to our investors. Um, we do that for all of our investors, no matter what the check size. So I think that that's kind of what, what we're all about, is bringing that level of sophistication that has normally just been exclusive to more institutional type of investing and bringing it to all sorts of different types of investors. So we really range uh, the spectrum of check size, uh, with our minimum being fifty thousand, and then we also work with family offices that you know obviously give um, have l much larger check amounts. But the point is, is that the fifty thousand dollar investor still gets the same sort of reporting and benefits um, that a, a larger investor would. Um, and then as far as 10 years from now, you know, it's, it's hard to say. We've definitely grown a lot in the last, um, I guess, almost six years, or it's been about six years now since the company started. Um, I would say just in a, the shorter term, uh, we are, um, our goal is to have a, a million, uh, sorry, a billion dollars of um, assets under management in, I would say, maybe three years. So right now we've done... Um, about a little over 500 million in acquisitions um, and so we're, we're just looking to keep growing but also maintain the quality of the investments that we're offering to our investors yeah unbelievable yeah uh, I wanted to ask you also uh, when when someone invest they become partner they become a, a passive investor how the terms it's work out uh, in the uh, for your customers if someone wants interest in investing in your company so become how it works so they call so you contact with uh, website or it must be some special uh, agents or so we um, offer investments on a deal by deal basis and um, depending on the size of the investor I mean we have uh, offer investments into our limited partnership so um, we offer just passive investments however we have structured deals before where if it's a larger check bringing about 90 percent of the equity then there's more flexibility with the way that the, the investment is structured and the partnership um, so it really depends but generally speaking the majority of our investors are just passive investors um, into the limited partnership and we are owning and operating the uh, the properties and this is for long term so the people understand so when they uh, invest money so they cannot to take out money for a couple years so you have contract with them this is true yes yeah, so the investments are illiquid and um, our typical hold period that, that we're looking projected hold period is about three to five years three or five years and later it's gonna re yeah. refinance so maybe uh, what you're gonna do how they uh, investors gonna uh, get their money back so as far as the the business plan it, it depends on the deal um, and as far as refinance we don't really ever project to do a refinance it's a little bit um, kind of riskier to for the business plan to depend on a refinance. However, we have done them in the past uh, when when it made sense. But as far as on the front end, um, if if a refinance is required uh, in order to kind of make the deal make sense, we generally we we don't underwrite that from the beginning. 
Um, but in the three to five year hold period, we would plan on selling the asset. Okay. And that's when the investors make the majority of their return. But of course, we do provide monthly distributions based on the cash flow that the property is making. So they become a, actually a partner in the deal and get cash flow and appreciation also with bad tax benefits or not? Yes. So we, for all of our deals, we do a cost segregation study so that accelerates the depreciation um, that investors are able to enjoy. Um, so investors do get tax benefits from these investments. Um, and then, you know, their investment is subject to our promote structure um, and, and our preferred return. So they, they do get the upside. Um, we, we both share the upside at the, at the upon sale. And investment, what uh, you're looking for, it's some percentage uh, from uh, what it's, uh, because uh, the, your company get uh, property, uh, your property get uh, London, and the rest of the money coming from investors, or also uh, your company also investor, also invest money there. How, how, how we, yeah. what we're talking about, uh, 20, 30, 40 percent, what? Uh, need to be uh, funded from uh, from investor sides. What kind of percentage is we talking about? <clears throat> yeah, so of course the, the equity check depends um, on the, the deal size and the leverage that we have on the property. But as far as the uh, like our investment as a firm, um, this excludes invest or employee investments. Uh, we typically do about five percent of the total equity check. So uh, five percent, and they get uh, cash on cash, cash on f cash flow with five six percent uh, prefer return, or how it's working in your company. So we can explain. So later. in yeah, passive. So we have multiple. Um, we have two tiers of investment um, or two classes, and the. Um, any investment from fifty thousand to four hundred and ninety-nine uh, would get a eight percent preferred return. That's cumulative and compounding. And once that is met, then there's a seventy thirty split between the LP and the GP. Up until a fifteen percent RR, then it's a fifty fifty split. Um, for our second class of investor, uh, that's for any investment that's five hundred thousand above. Um, there is a nine percent preferred return, and it's a seventy thirty split the whole way. So there isn't that second tier. So when you have lower uh, lower cap rate, uh, we're talking about. So if you buy some property, it's cash flow uh, in cash on cash uh, return from your investment five percent. So it's gonna be fifty fifty split over above uh, the five percent. Uh, and uh, if if it's increase uh, in five years cash flow. Uh, in cap rate has become seven eight percent, so it's going to be become a fifty fifty uh, split. Uh, everything what ab about a preferred return is going to be five. This is what I understand. Uh, no, the the, per the preferred return for our lower class, uh, like our class A investors, which is for fifty thousand minimum up to four hundred ninety nine. There's an eight percent preferred return. And if somehow cash on cash is significantly higher, uh, we still do not, um, the GP, so Lone Star would not participate in any of the profits up until um, the sale. So even if we do a refinance and there's cash out and um, some return of principal as well as um, preferred return catching up, um, Lone Star still does not participate in any of the profits until the deal is actually sold. Um, and so there's the 8% preferred return, it's a 70-30 split, up until a 15% IRR is met, then it's a 50-50 split after 15% IRR. So 70-30, it's 70% for the company or for the investors? For the investor. For investors. 70% to the investor, yeah. Yeah, it's actually impressive. Uh, cash on cash return uh, 8% and uh, what you're talking about with prices and uh, landers where they uh, landed for 8% or 6% uh, loan so uh, you must maybe uh, put 50% uh, 
like cash so for an EU financing 50% or EU financing 40% how it's work for you for get this cap rate very high so there there's a common misconception about so the preferred return is not necessarily the cash on cash that the property is going to be producing that is simply just the preferred return that it needs to be met in order for us to participate at all in the profits um, so the cash on cash for a lot of the times is lower than 8%, which is our preferred return. And whatever difference it is between the 8% and the actual cash on cash, uh, that accrues and compounds. So that, that is a little bit different. Yeah, but I'm asking, you know, because, because points, of today uh, in this uh, uh, world was we were looking for so uh, some kind of properties, it's very difficult to find for 10, uh, 11, 12% uh, return. Uh, mm -hmm. Cap rate uh, the produce, uh, you know, uh, and that. so it must to be very good location. So it's maybe four five percent return of the capital. So that's what uh, it's very impressive. Uh, I wanted to you explain a little bit uh, eight percent uh, re prefer return from capital. How th how it is possible and uh, with kind of location you will, you you're working. I see you have properties in Texas. Uh, you working uh, all uh, the country, all the US. You also invest in outside the country or in another countries, or <laughs> are you just uh, invest in inside the US? And which kind of? It, it's like uh, it's very difficult to find uh, eight percent return. How how you do this? <laughs> you can explain to us, or maybe we need to speak with uh, someone else. So it's very just curious and interesting how how you can find this kind of deals. So as far as um, our geographic criteria, we're only in Texas and specifically only in Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio. So it's a good um, market for you. It's a very nice market. Miami, everybody, work, uh, migration, go to down to Sur. So, uh, mm -hmm. so all, all of our properties thus far have been in Texas. So we really have scales of economy in in Texas and in those markets specifically as well as good relationships with brokers of course as well as um, different uh, general contractors and, and construction firms so we're, we're able to have a really good pulse on construction costs and what it takes to operate the property because we are so concentrated in those markets um, and then as far as the 8% uh, preferred return that we were talking about that what I was I was explaining is the preferred return is simply a deal structure it's not necessarily the, the cash on cash that we are projecting mm -hmm. however um, we do have some deals coming up we, where we are seeing that the cash on cash is higher than it was before um, just because we're, we're able to buy these properties right now uh, in certain cases at a much better basis than before just with prices softening a lot that, that that's what we're seeing in the market right now and for be clean here so uh, you uh, company buy it almost down businesses you don't build that is true right so we we buy uh, existing properties and then we have you know some sort of value-add business plan um, we have not done ground-up development that, that's what I'm at. I'm talking also same for in my, in my audience. So some uh, people don't understand. They very emotional. So for, for wanted to build something. Can you explain to audience why you don't shoot to build? You because and you have almost done businesses. Uh, can you explain to a little bit for audience so they can understand? It's not only me just tell my audience also about the you buy it almost done, not not built. Can you explain a little bit mm -hmm. about this? Yeah, so I mean, there you can definitely make a lot of money in doing development. However, it is a bit riskier. I mean, not a bit. It's a significantly riskier business plan. Um, additionally, in the markets that we're in, we don't really see that developers are being uh, appropriately compensated for that risk. You know, they're. Um, so in certain cases, um, the, these properties, these new developments are selling below the replacement cost. So it's doesn't, for that additional risk that you're taking, it doesn't really seem to be worth the squeeze right now where we're at the market and maybe these particular geographic locations that we're in. 
However, at some point we would be interested in getting into ground up development, but that's we're just really trying to focus and on our specific business plans, uh, specific geographic markets, and and things like that. So, ladies and gentlemen, now you know. Not only meet and tell about tariff. So, yeah, and, and and you know if you're gonna be someone in the USA, uh, in, in in so find the Lone Star Capital, and you see here. So they invest in almost done businesses. So they don't build. And this is you have leverage, you have appreciation, and in the good location like Houston, like Texas. So it's unbelievable market, very hot market for buy this and for long term investment. So now you know. So uh, find LoneStarCapital.com, visit there, and just can you do you have some uh, kind of uh, address for audience so they can uh, when they find you. Yeah, so our website is uh, www.lscre.com and my email is dasha, D-A-S-H-A, at lscre.com. So, now you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you what you built, what your family built, so it's unbelievable. And uh, uh, nice to meet you, Dasha. It was was amazing uh, opportunity for me to get podcast with you. Uh, for audience, <laughs> it's gonna be unbelievable value uh, for invest if they in US, so they can contact with Lone Star Capital directly. And uh, also for who started and wanted to pass to commercial apartments, buildings, and uh, get uh, so uh, start to sell. So uh, this is information. So you have uh, social media from Dasha. You have uh, also social media in my site. So we follow us, subscribe, share, and uh, just do it. Sometimes you just talking, talking, but uh, very important uh, get action and start to invest. For be investor, you must to invest. Thank you, Dasha. Absolutely. Wesley. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was great chatting. If you really wanted to become investor, be investor and start to invest with someone who know what they do. Thank you, Dasha. Great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was great.